What's up guys? My name is Allison and I make beauty and fashion videos. Today is the launch of Selena Gomez's new makeup line called Rare Beauty and so I hauled my butt off to Sephora and picked up all the products that I was interested in trying. These are the five products that I got. The foundation, concealer, blush, dewy lip balm and lip souffle and honestly i never go out and purchase new products right after they launch i'm definitely more of a sale kind of girl but i was just so interested in this line everything looks so cute and reasonably priced and high quality so i decided to pick some products out and try them on camera please like this video if you like first impressions and consider subscribing to my channel it would mean so much to me and without further ado let's go into trying on the products all right, I am back from Sephora. I ended up picking up five of the products from the line. I got the foundation, concealer, the blush, a lip balm, and the lip souffle. The primer seemed really nice, but didn't really seem like something I needed. Same thing with the mist. And I actually have sensitive fungal acne prone skin, so a lot of the complexion products are probably gonna break me out, so I only got the foundation and concealer. The brow product didn't seem that appealing to me, and same thing with the eyeliner. I also decided to pass on the highlighter because the colors didn't really seem that appealing to me, and I'm not really into metallic liquid highlighters anymore. I like something with a really fine pearl and just reflection. So yeah, I mean, she came out with a huge line of products, and honestly, the majority of it seems really good. The prices are actually quite reasonable for a Sephora brand as well. The five products that I got was just over $100, which I mean, I've definitely spent $100 on like two products at Sephora before. Definitely pleasantly surprised by that. I think this slightly lower price point, but still having really high quality products is really gonna make this brand super popular. Okay, so for the foundation and concealer, I picked up the shade 190W in both. This is the shade that I figured I was going to be by looking at stuff online. I did swatch it on my hand when I got home a little bit earlier, and it does seem like it should be a pretty good match. I honestly got more confused when I went in the store and asked the employees to swatch the shades for me because they swatch the colors on this like plexiglass, and it just really makes the texture and the color a lot harder to perceive than if you had just like swatched on yourself, of course. I am very excited to try these out. If you are a returning subscriber to my channel, you're probably wondering why is she getting a non-fungal acne safe foundation and concealer? And the reason is I don't have a good excuse. I'm just kind of in denial that I'm gonna have to deal with fungal acne for a long time. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to at some point use these products without breaking out and I still just wanted to see how it performed on my skin because it just seemed like a dream in the reviews that I've seen. When I saw the product line come out, I was definitely drawn to the lip and cheek products the most. But yeah, after I watched some reviews, pretty much everyone said that the foundation and concealer was their favorite product from the line and the most impressive one. So let me zoom you in so we can see how the product applies. I also honestly wanted to try the brushes, but I was like, no, you're you're buying five products from the line. You don't need brushes because I don't actually use brushes to apply foundation ever. So, <laughs> um, but I do actually kind of want to try it with some of the brushes that I already have because it does seem like the formula applied really well with the brushes. So I think I'm gonna go with concealer first. That's typically what I usually do so that I don't need to apply as much foundation on top. Love the little packaging on all of these guys. Apparently the little circles on the packaging are not just for aesthetics. They are designed so that people with arthritis can actually use them and use like their palm to open the product rather than having to use your fingers to twist it off, which I thought was really cool. I absolutely love that they were able to add this feature that just adds accessibility to the product, but do so in a way that appears to people as just like a nice aesthetic touch. So here's what the concealer applicator looks like. And I'm just gonna start with a little bit around the face. I'm gonna try to use a brush on the left on this side of my face, and then we'll go in with a sponge on the other side. This is like a little Real Techniques eyeshadow brush, but it actually looked kind of similar to their concealer brush. Oh, I totally forgot I was going to apply some more moisturizer to prep my skin, but my skin still feels pretty 
moisturized. Concealer blended out really nicely with that brush. There's definitely a good amount of coverage in that concealer, probably like a medium coverage, but it looks very skin-like. And then now I'm gonna take the sponge on the other side. I'm using a wet sponge and it's definitely soaking up more of the product, so I think I'm gonna have to go in with a little bit more here. Okay, so here's a little bit of a close-up of just the concealer on my skin. It's definitely not perfectly blended out, but I'm gonna wait for the foundation to kind of help blend everything together. The concealer definitely has a good amount of coverage, but it still has a really nice skin-like finish. So I do think with a sponge especially, if you just wanted to use concealer and go foundation free, you could totally do that. I do actually like the side with the brush. I think this is just like a general thing on technique, but I do feel like I was able to get a more precise coverage and cover the spots that I wanted to. And since I am going in with foundation after, I wasn't too picky about completely making everything seamless. The brush does seem to work really well with the formula. It blends out super easily and there wasn't really any brush marks or anything. So yeah, this is the brush side. You can kind of see the coverage under the eye and on this like area right here is more concentrated and you can kind of see the, the areas where I don't have any concealer versus this side where I ended up having to build it up a little bit more under the eye. It ended up kind of blending out over a wider surface area. I do think the shade is a really good match for me. I don't like too bright of an under eye, but if I wanted it a little bit brighter, I would probably want to go up a shade or two. And then now let's go into the foundation. So the foundation also has a large doe foot applicator. And I think for me, I'm actually gonna put some on my hand. It's definitely personal preference if you don't mind putting the app applicator directly on your face, just like the concealer. But since I'm fungal acne prone, I just want to try to keep things as sanitary as possible so that I can increase my chances of hopefully using this product down the road. So I put a bit on my hand and I'm just going to take a bit on this side first. And I'm not going to take too much product, I'm just going to go in with the brush. The shade looks like it might be a little dark and warm for my skin. And then for the other side, I'm gonna use my sponge. I ended up going over this side with a little bit of the sponge as well just to pick up a little bit of the extra product because I do think I prefer applying a little bit less of it. I would say the foundation and concealer give a solid medium coverage and it looks really nice on the skin. It's not too dewy but you can definitely see a bit of this glow and I didn't use the illuminating primer or any other special glowy skin prep. It does feel really lightweight on the skin, especially for, I feel like, the amount of coverage that my face has. And my face feels a teeny bit tacky. All right, so here is a close-up of my skin. The forehead is probably where I have the most kind of like just uneven texture. And then I have a couple of spots. Around the nose, the side where I use the brush looks a teeny bit more cakey, but actually pretty good. And then this side looks really nice as well with the sponge. I didn't use as much product there. So yeah, overall, I think it looks really good. It definitely gives off more of a natural makeup vibe while still giving you quite a bit of coverage. I personally like a very light coverage in my base, so I would probably even use 
less foundation. You can see a teeny bit of creasing right here on my lower lash line. So I think I'm just gonna powder it ever so slightly. I really wanna apply the products how I would normally wear it. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of powder under the eyes. This is the Hourglass Loose Powder. Also gonna apply a little bit around the nose, on the chin, and then I think I'll leave the T-zone unpowdered. Okay, so now I wanna try the liquid blush. I think it's called the Just a Pinch blush, um, but love the packaging on these. The caps are gold. I think it's really cool that she came out with a matte and dewy formula for the blush. I've never tried a matte liquid blush, but to be honest, if I'm going to use a liquid blush, I would definitely want it to be dewy. So there was really only one shade that I was drawn to, which is Joy. It's like a nice bright coral color. At this point, I do feel like I have quite a few liquid blushes, but this one just looked so pretty and I really wanted to pick it up, especially for the packaging. So we'll see how it stacks up against my other liquid blushes eventually, but I am excited to try this out today. Again, it comes with a doe foot applicator and from what I've seen, one dot per cheek is gonna be more than enough for me. It's a super pigmented product, which is really cool because that means it's going to be able to work for a lot of different skin tones. Okay, so I just did one dot per cheek and I'm gonna use this brush to blend it out. Oof. Oh man. <laughs> I was thinking maybe I should put it on the back of my hand to apply it, but because it comes in that doe foot applicator, it just makes it seem so easy to put directly on the face. Okay, definitely gonna have to use a sponge. The color is really pretty actually. It reminds me of one of my new favorite shades of the Nude Sticks blushes. It's called Salty Siren and it's like a really pretty peachy coral like this. Okay, the product blends out really nicely, but it's just so incredibly pigmented. I feel like cream blushes tend to lose a little bit of their intensity as they kind of like absorb into the skin. So I'm gonna wait a little bit. If it's still too much, then I might go over it with a little bit more foundation or concealer. But next we can move on to the lip products. So I did pick up one shade of the Dewy Lip Balm and then one shade of the Lip Souffle. I got the lip balm in the shade Praise, which is a really pretty lighter peachy color. Again, I wasn't really a fan of looking at the swatches of the lip balms in store at Sephora on those little plexiglass things. The formula just didn't really stick to it well, so you weren't really able to see the true color, I feel like. I do regret actually not getting one of the deeper shades. My lips are quite pigmented and they're also a little bit dry and not completely smooth. And since this formula is so pigmented, I find that the color doesn't sit that nicely on top. So as you can see, quite a bit of pigment for just a really light swipe. I do think the color is really pretty, but let me just show you up close. You can kind of see how the pigment gathers in the more drier areas. It's honestly not that bad, especially from further away, but I do think a deeper color would be something that I would reach for more on an everyday basis. These lip balms do have a little bit of a scent and a taste to them. It's not like a typical fruity or floral or vanilla scent. It's not very strong and it's not unpleasant, but it's not my favorite. I do like the concept of this lip balm and how it was like designed with the packaging to not roll off your nightstand or something. But I personally would imagine that kind of product to put more of an emphasis on the hydration rather than the pigment. They do feel quite lightweight and thin and nicely moisturizing. If I had to compare them to the Fenty Slip Shines, which are also more of a like sheer lipstick, I think those actually have a thicker formula and feel a bit thicker on the lips. This product does feel more emollient and kind of slippy. In the little intro video that Selena made for each of the product on Sephora, she said that she's left this lip balm in her car and it hasn't melted, which I'm actually pretty surprised by considering this formula does seem to be 
quite emollient and soft. Overall, I do like this product. I had the hardest time picking out which shade to get for this one, and I'm not completely happy with this color, so I might go back and exchange it for Thankful, which is more of that like brown nude color. So let me just wipe this one off and then we can try the Lip Souffle. So I ended up getting the Lip Souffle in the shade Brave. It just looked like such a gorgeous, nice everyday terracotta color and these days i'm definitely more interested in like a sheer glossy lip but i was actually really excited to try the lip souffle because they really reminded me of korean lip tints this one has a really moussey blurring formula that looks really similar to a lot of the korean lip products from like 3CE, Peripera that I've seen. So I am really excited to try this one out. This product is made in Korea. And this product is the only one that has this kind of like rubbery soft touch packaging, which just feels so nice. Oh yeah, I really like this. I really like the color and I really like the formula. It just feels so lightweight on the lips and I love how soft and blurred it makes my lips look and feel. If it wears nicely throughout the day, then I might consider picking up Inspire, I think, which is like the nice red shade that Selena wears in all the photos. Okay, so that is all the products. Let me put on some brows and some mascara and I'll be right back. All right, the rest of my makeup is complete. I decided to put on a little bit of winged eyeliner and I really like how my makeup looks. The blush is definitely a statement. I would probably tone it down a little bit more on an everyday basis, but I feel like it really kind of completes the look. I did add a little bit of bronzer underneath to give my face a bit more shape, but overall I think everything looks amazing. I actually think the foundation match is fine. Let me do a little roundup of the products that we used and my final thoughts on them so far. So I think my favorite product out of the bunch is the concealer. I think the color just worked really well for me and I really liked the amount of coverage as well as the finish that it has. It reminds me a lot of the Kosas concealer that I tried pretty recently. I did stop using that product because I felt like it was breaking me out, so we'll see if this one does the same. But yeah, I have pretty dry skin and it's hard to find something that looks so nice under the eyes and in this area right here. I feel like that is where the dryness is the most emphasized by makeup and I feel like those areas of my face look really good right now. Again, here is a close-up now that all the makeup has kind of settled into the skin, but you can see that it looks really nice and covered. Um, it's not like too dewy. The dewiness is really coming through on that dewy blush, but other than that, it just has like a really nice natural shine to it. As for the foundation, I thought it was really nice and it pairs really nicely with the concealer. I honestly am just not the biggest foundation wearer, so I'm probably not the best judge for this, but if you're someone like me who likes really natural, minimal makeup, then maybe you'll have the same opinion as me. I personally think I could get away with using the concealer in areas where I do want more coverage and then using something super sheer to just kind of even things out on top. This foundation offers a good amount of coverage, so personally for me, it's more than what I would need on an everyday basis. I think it would be really easily sheared out and just applied sparingly since the formula does seem to like spread very well and go a long way. So that's probably how I would be using it from now on. If you do prefer something with a little bit more coverage that still feels really light and natural on the skin, then I would definitely recommend trying this out. I really do feel like I'm not wearing a lot of makeup right now, which is a huge plus. For cheeks, I am surprisingly more happy than I was expecting with this dewy blush. Again, I got the shade Joy and it reminds me kind of like a Glossier Beam, as well as the Nude Sticks color in Salty Siren that I mentioned. It's just a nice bright coral color that I think is super flattering on the cheeks. If you're on the lighter side, then I actually would recommend putting this on the back of your hand and then picking up some of the product with a sponge or a brush so that you have less pigment and a lot more control on where to place the blush. My skin overall still feels pretty much the same as after I applied the foundation, which was just a little bit tacky. And in the areas where I have the blush, it doesn't really feel extra tacky. I think the finish on these blushes is spot on. It's definitely dewy and skin-like, but it's not too crazy. And oily looking. To compare it to some of my other favorite liquid blushes, I would say the M Cosmetics and the Physicians Formula one are more dewy than this one. I think the finish is probably the most similar to my Flower Beauty blush bombs, but those are nowhere near as pigmented as these are. I really hope Selena expands the shade range on these blushes because I would definitely love to pick up more. For the lips, I think I'm just gonna have to pick up a different color 
in the lip balm. These are definitely quite pigmented, more of like a sheer balmy lipstick. So definitely go in with the expectation of that unless you want to get the clear color. With something like this, I think it's just really important to get a color that works for you. On the other hand, I'm very happy with the color that I got in the Lip Souffle. Again, this is the color Brave and it's like the most neutral terracotta color that they have. It looks super nice on the lips and really does remind me of those Korean velvet lip tints. The color has definitely dried down and it has just like a slight powdery feel to it. It feels really soft and smooth. And it does seem relatively transfer proof for a formula that isn't too drying. So that sums up my thoughts on the Rare Beauty products that I picked up. I think Selena Gomez and her team did a fantastic job on this launch. I'm not like a huge Selena Gomez fan or anything, but I do really like high quality aesthetic makeup. So I'm very excited for the brand and to see what they come out with next. I feel like there's definitely got to be a bronzer in the lineup coming out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Please consider checking out my other videos and subscribing. It would really mean so much to me and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.